Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs in a square hole. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change them. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. It's the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Thank you very much for coming to our developer conference. We've got some great stuff for you today. Um, I'd like to start off <coughs> giving you an update on our company and an update on what we announced last Wednesday, our new products and our whole product strategy. Now, how many of you were there last Wednesday, just so I can get a feeling? Some of you. Okay, great. But well, we want to clue the rest of you in, in case you missed something. So, let's get started, and then we'll get to the to the real heart of the matter, which is our software strategy. So Apple Computer. I arrived back at Apple 10 months ago, and um, a lot of things were broken. And we've managed to fix a lot of things in 10 months. And I'm really pleased to report to you that the company's back on track. The company's doing great. And a lot of that, of course, is due to the hard work of the, Apple, the people at Apple. They're really, really great, and they're working like crazy to make Apple shine again. And so let me review a few of those things. And when, you, when you look at any company, the most important thing is people. And Apple is, is, is really blessed with some great people. We have a very wise board of directors. We've got a really strong senior management team now. I, as I said on Wednesday, I'd hold them up against anyone in the industry, any other senior management team in the industry. We, most of all, though, got some incredibly talented employees. And when you've got great people, the most important thing to do is to keep them. And last summer, Apple was losing people at the annualized attrition rate of 33% a year. And you don't last very long if you're losing your great people at 33% a year. And I'm really pleased to report that the attrition rate is now down to 15% a year, which is below the Silicon Valley average, which is amazing in Internet boom time. Next, <clears throat> distribution. We've made a lot of changes and tune-ups in our distribution system at Apple. And one of the bigger ones was to focus on one national distributor, which happens to be the biggest, CompUSA. Now, when we started this relationship with CompUSA, we were Nowheresville, and they agreed to put an Apple store within a store in each one of their roughly 170 locations throughout the U.S. And because of this and because of the focus that each of the two companies has brought to bear, when we started this program in last October, if you looked at CompUSA's total CPU revenues, Apple represented 3%. I'm very pleased to report that we are now 15% of the revenues in CompUSA for CPU. And we expect that number to climb. Next is Apple.com. You know, this is, the Internet is a great gauge of overall interest in the company. We've got customers, existing customers. We've got prospective customers. We've got competitors. We've got software developers. We've got quick time downloaders. You name it, they all go to Apple.com. And we've invested a lot in our website to really make it worth going to. And, of course, we have the award-winning Apple Store, one of the gold standards of e-commerce. And... Again, 10 months ago, the Apple websites were getting 1 million hits a day. That's 1 to 200,000 visitors per day. I'm pleased to report that 10 months later, that is now 10 million hits a day, or 1 to 2 million visitors per day. <clears throat> Growth. 
Growth is important for us. And as you know, our market share, as measured by IDC, uh, was about 3.4% in the quarter ending in December. The new figures have just been released, and even in this very competitive marketplace in the last quarter, Apple grew 15% in market share. Now, we're not happy about having 4% market share. Uh, and thank God in the markets we focus on, such as design and publishing, where our market share is 50 to 90% depending on what segment you look at, or education where our market share is over 50% of the installed units and about 37% of the new sell-ins, we do much better. But still we would like to raise this and we believe that some of the new products we've introduced last week are going to help us. And lastly, finance. We have a lot of very ambitious plans. We need to be healthy financially to finance them. And again, as you know, Apple has turned a profit each of the last two quarters. In the first half of this year, we've made over $100 million of profit. In addition, we have grown our cash. For the quarter ending December, we had $1.6 billion worth of cash. That was $100 million over the prior quarter. And this last quarter ending the end of March, we added $200 million more to bring it to $1.8 billion worth of cash. This is very, very important to ensure our customers, potential customers, that Apple is going to be here 10 years from now. And lastly, in market value, actually this slide's a little old, it's gone up since then, but the market value of Apple has gone from $1.8 billion 10 months ago to actually about $4 billion today. And uh, who knows where it's going tomorrow. <clears throat> so I think the company that we all really care about is getting back on track, and it feels, feels very good. Now, I was very privileged to um, represent all the folks at Apple to introduce some great products last Wednesday, and I'd like to take you through them right now. Now, if you go back and you look at the products last summer, what I found when I got here was a zillion and one products. Uh, this was, th th these were 15 of the, of the platforms. On top of this, of course, were all the servers and the monitors and the scanners and the printers, and it, it, it was amazing. And I started to ask people, well, now, why would I recommend a 3400 over a 4400? Or when should somebody jump up to a 6500 but not a 7300? And after three weeks, I couldn't figure this out. And I figured, if I can't figure it out working inside Apple with all these experts telling me in three weeks, how are customers ever going to figure this out? So we decided to say, what are the right products for our customers? And some of these products were very good products. But as of now, we're making none of them anymore. And what we decided to put in its place was to go back to you know, business school 101 and say, okay, what do our customers want? And we have customers that want consumer products. And we have customers that want pro products. Now, education, which is a huge market for us, primarily wants the consumer products, although they buy some pro products too. And each of these customers wants portables and desktops for each of these categories. And so if we could make literally four great product platforms, we'd be doing fantastic. And that's what we set out to do 10 months ago. And the first one, which we introduced last November, of course, is the Power Macintosh G3. And we've sold over 500,000 of these in the first six months, making it the most successful Apple new product launch in history. And as you know, these products are screamers. These are the bite mark tests. Bite mark is the best and most respected independent benchmark that we know of. And we, as you see, stack up not only extraordinarily well next to our 266 and 300 megahertz Pentium counterparts, but we smoke the newest, fastest Pentium 2 400. So we are extremely happy with these products. And of course, you might have seen our advertising. <laughs> uh, do you guys like it, by the way? Yeah? Um, there's more coming. Uh, would you like to see these commercials? I've got them queued up if you want to see them. Yeah? Okay. Let's go ahead and roll them. Mm -hmm. 